I'm Chris Thomas, the Chief Instructor of the Kyushu Jitsu Kenkyu Kai, and welcome to this second episode of the Pressure Point Dojo on Channel Fight. Thanks for joining me. On our last episode, we looked at a few points to get you started, a handful of six really important points, and then we covered the very first overarching principle of Kyushu Jitsu, a principle which is called area control. And you learned about uh, location and angle and direction and method of activation and some things like that. And that was a great way to get started on a journey of understanding pressure points and including them in your martial art. Today we're going to continue that journey and we're going to be looking at the second principle, a, a bigger concept called systemic compromise. Then we're also going to take some time to look at some, well, what I call tricks and cheats of pressure points. So let's start now with systemic compromise, that overarching principle, the second principle. Join me in the master class. The next principle of Kyushu Jitsu is the principle called systemic compromise. So first you have to understand what system means. When we talk about Kyushu Jitsu, we start to talk about the meridians, the same meridians that are used in acupuncture. Now, when we're talking about area control, we're going to talk about local anatomy. So you heard me mention before, I mentioned the radial nerve, just sort of in passing. Well, there's a lot of that stuff. If I'm talking about uh, lung six and how it's a hit point, I may also start talking about something called a fusiform fiber, which is designed to monitor the the bone and see if the bone is going to break. And that when I'm hitting it, I'm tricking that thing. to, to It tells the body the bone's going to break. And so that's why the hand release and it jumps away, because it's trying to escape a threat to break the bone. And this bypasses the brain and goes through the spinal reflex, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Local anatomy when we describe area control. But when we start to talk about the next level up, now we're talking Chinese medicine traditional oriental medicine. The meridian, the lung meridian, for example, is not just about the meridian. It's also about the organ that it's attached to. So when we say lung, we literally mean both the organ, the physical organ that you would look up in an anatomy book, and the meridian that you would see in an acupuncture book. And here's how you can see this. If I press on here, now, I'm going to, this is a hit point, lung five, but what I'm going to do is manipulate it in a way that I can get an effect without actually hitting it. Now what you're going to see, this is the, basically the same reaction I would get by hitting it, a little less dramatic because I'm just, I'm just pressing on it, but I want you to watch, there's a lung here and there's a lung here. This is the meridian on this side, it affects that lung. You can see the body trying to protect the lung. The body pulls the lung out of the way to defend it. In fact, not only that, but as the body pulls the lung out of the way, the, the lung is, is is still fairly protected right here because the body is rounding to protect the lung. What's actually happening is that the, the weakness of the lung goes into the back. It's way back here. You can see, I'm just like a little finger taps. But that's where the weakness is gone from attacking this point. Now if I attack the large intestine point, large intestine is um, colon, you'll see how his body right here, that's where his large intestine is, moves away. It's trying to escape. So everything is that way. You grab a point, here's the heart meridian point, look at him try to move his heart out of the way. His body is reacting to protect the organ. So if you understand this, then what you realize is that any time you attack a point on a meridian, you are compromising that system, the whole system. The lung, the meridian itself, and so here's what that means. You can think of it this way. If I attack a point, that point is under attack, so it calls for reinforcements. The, the most important thing that the whole meridian wants to guard is the organ itself moves out of the way to hide and protect, but energy is diverted from everywhere else in the meridian to the place I'm attacking. And that means that the rest of the meridian is now weakened. It's under-defended. Here's a great way for us to demonstrate that. Right here um, at the end of the nas nasal sulcus is the point large intestine 20. Large intestine meridian happens to be the only meridian that actually crosses the body. So this large intestine meridian over here ends over here and vice versa. If I push on that with my knuckle, I get a nice reaction. But so he's, let's say he's holding on to me. I push on it with my knuckle, nice reaction. But if I just touch here and push, it's a much bigger reaction. That's because 
just by touching here, I've, I've created a threat in the meridian. The energy gets diverted here. All of the other points are weakened. So the, the systemic compromise means that I, once I attack any point on the meridian, I just keep attacking points on the meridian. It's a very, very simple concept. Very easy to do, but you can see why it happens and why it works. When I started Masterclass, I, I was trying to create a resource that would be useful to people regardless of style. And, and that's proven to be the case. In fact, um, it turns out that for my students who train Ishinru Karate, they actually find that they learn probably more from the sections on Tai Chi or Rukyu Kempo. And likewise, the Rukyu Kempo students learn stuff from the Ishinru and Tai Chi segments and the Tai Chi people. Are, and the reason for this is that when you're in a certain way of thinking, which is the way style works, it kind of boundaries the, how you see the world. By looking at it from a different point of view, you see something that's in your style that you didn't realize. And so everything is built on principles that can be applied to your style. So it doesn't really matter if you practice the same style that I do, because the principles always apply. Masterclass with Chris Thomas is an extensive library of in-depth video instruction covering Ishinru Karate, Rukyu Kempo, Tai Chi, Okinawan weapons, and so much more. It's a great value at $399 per year, but as a viewer of the Pressure Point Dojo, you can subscribe for only $119 per year. That's an amazing 60% discount. Just use the promo code DOJO when you subscribe. That's D-O-J-O in all capital letters. When you subscribe to Masterclass, with Chris Thomas, I, I just want to remind you that there is that delay from when you complete your subscription and when you're actually able to watch the videos because I have to activate your subscription so that you have full access. And that can take a little while. I, my apologies for that. Um, but know that it's me personally doing it. And when you get an email saying, welcome to Masterclass, that also is coming from me personally. Trust me though, it's definitely worth the wait. Lionel Foidieu is a martial artist in southern France, in, in the area around Toulouse. And he's a great practitioner, but also he's a documentarian and a producer of martial arts instructional videos. His material can be found at imaginearts.tv. He has a lovely library of material that he's produced, available on DVD, and I, I, I think most of it you can, you can also download directly so that you can access it that way. And this includes some uh, DVDs uh, featuring me. In fact, when he had come to the United States to train with me in Kyushu Jitsu while working on a documentary on, the, on pressure point fighting, I took the time with him in the dojo to cover what I call tricks and cheats, and the reason for this is simple. A lot of times people, they, they learn where the point is and they can kind of make it work, but they, they don't really get the big result. And they wonder, what's the secret? How are, how are the experts getting the big results? And how can they reproduce that? Well, that's what this next video is about. It's about getting those little things that will enhance your skill. So let's head into the master class. Every point, um, causes something to happen in the immediate area. Mm -hmm. So a point will cause a joint to bend, will cause a joint to release. And so we start by thinking in terms of uh, where all of the joints are, there's going to be a point that we can use to get an outcome right locally. So as a convenience, it's helpful to start with this point right here, which is heart six. It's called yin ji, the yin cleft point. And so the easy way to train it for people when they're first learning, the point is located right here. But the way to get it is you come this way. See how I'm kind of grinding across? I'm actually cheating. Oh. So I cheat. This is a small intestine point, so I'm cheating already. But what I do is I press across, and this allows me to feel where the bone is. And you can feel my finger now is coming, wrapping right around and hooking. And this is called a touch point, but you have to understand that the meaning of the word touch in Japanese, that word is ate, as in empi ate. Mm -hmm. So touch doesn't mean, it means dig your finger in and try to come out the other side. Now you see what's happening here is your, your wrist is buckling here and your whole arm is starting to react to this, this way. And then at the same time, then I'm going to use mechanics. I'm just going to press a little and this comes off. So this is an easy, easy, basic way to work heart eight. 
The other easy basic way, way to do that is with your thumb this way. So it's very similar motion here, like this. And then in this case, as I release it, I roll across and I'm gonna cheat across to the lung point and just trap it to my body. So again, my, I reach over with my thumb this way and I hook. Now if he grabs with this hand, same idea. This time I'm gonna take my thumb so you can see this. I'm actually gonna rake across like this. This is the cheat. I'm gonna rake across and then I catch that heart point and pull it up this way towards my body like this. This allows me to lock it in and punch. So in many styles you, you do this and then step forward and punch and that's, that's all it is. That's just that simple motion. We said cheat early, cheat often, so I need for you to see the cheat point that goes with this. So this, this point, heart six, is right next to a point which is called uh, heart seven. Heart seven is, the, is called, uh, the name in Chinese is, is uh, shin, uh, Shenmen, or in Japanese, Shinmon. It's the gateway to the heart. So if I, if I grab Harvey here, heart six is located here. Heart seven is actually right in here. It's in the crease. And there's a tendon, and you can feel the tendon. So if you put your finger in this space, you feel a little tendon, and then there's a little hollow place, and then you feel another tendon. It's right in that hollow place. And the direction for this point is straight across the line this way. See that little bit of reaction. So when I grab here, so first I'm going to do up here so you can see. As I'm reaching around to grab here, this point also slips over. So I hook on this point and I press a little bit, just a teeny bit here. I don't need to get a reaction. I just need to get the energy of the body to deflect to the point that it thinks I'm after. So this is another cheat. So now it's two fingers coming over and I touch with one in one direction and then I hook with the other. And there it is. It's a very, very easy thing to do. More on cheating. Uh, so I, we just cheated on, the, on heart six using a, a play with heart seven. And we're going to cheat again now. We're going to do that on the lung meridian. And the points we're going to use are lung eight and lung nine. Now this also gives me a chance to really make the point that when we're talking about area control, that first section, uh, uh, la control de la zone, that, um, that you have to know where the point is, and you have to know the angle to attack it at, and then you have to know what is the way in which you attack it. So when we were coming in here, this is the, we were coming in this direction on the heart meridian point and pressing really hard. It was a touch, what we call a touch point, but maybe a word like press or dig your finger for all it's worth um, is a better term. This lung point is a rub point. And when you rub this point, so this point, heart six, causes the wrist to bend. This point causes the fingers to, to become loose. And it loosens the grip and, and you can, I was actually, one of the early things we were taught was that it was possible when a punch was coming to just attack that in the air. It's a, it's a high skill technique because you're going after a moving target. But if you would do it, then the hand would loosen up so that even if they did hit you, their fist was loose. And so that was just one of the points that was often made early on. When we're first learning this point, there's a couple ways that we help people learn it. One way is to take a knuckle like this and to rub this way. So you start where a nurse would feel a pulse, and then you rub. So this is between the bone and the tendon. So if we're looking at, at uh, Harvey here, uh, I would start up here, like where I would feel the pulse, and then I would rub this direction. And you, there's a little, right where the ep, uh, epicondyle of the bone is, there's this little, like, pocket or uh, it feels like it's made for your finger. So you rub up into that point. So you're rubbing this direction. So it's, you just rub like that. Now, typically if somebody's grabbed and I'm doing this off of a grab, what I do is I catch with my fingers here like I'm taking a pulse and then I have to hook my fingers up towards me. You see on the direction I'm turning my hand like this and pulling, I'm going up towards him in and pulling it into my body. But that can be a lot of work. So now we add lung nine. Lung nine is located right here. Just like heart seven, it's located right in the space, in the joint. And what you feel is there's a tendon on the top, tendon, hollow pocket, another tendon. So there's, there's a tendon right here, there's a little hollow pocket, and then there's another tendon. This is a touch point. I put my finger in and I go kind of across that way before I catch and pull this way. And it makes it easier for me to do this. So it's, as Leon said, it's like playing the piano. 
<laughs> I'm playing the piano. Yeah. Now, in this case, when we were down here, we, both of these were the same direction. Now, the w reason why this is such a valuable combination is that I'm training myself to go in two different directions. The first one is a press point across. The second one is a rub point towards me. So I do one and then the other. So this is a really effective way to cheat. And one of my favorite cheats on a very commonly used point, uh, lung number eight. Another way in which we cheat uh, is sometimes how we use points on the body. On my body, as I'm attacking a point on his body. So a good example is the point uh, triple warmer three, located right here. It turns out that on the other side, right on the palm of the hand, there's another point called heart eight. And if you were to take a needle, like in acupuncture, and start pushing it through triple warmer three and then not stop, it will come out heart eight. So these two points are connected to each other. And that means that when I open a kata, for example, and I do this, I'm actually touching my triple warmer three to my heart eight. They're, they're internally connected points. This also means that because of this relationship, if he's got a fist up, his triple warmer three point is receive, will receive energy from my heart eight point. So if, for example, I'm trying to put him into a, you know, a wrist bend technique and I'm having trouble, I can just touch here. <laughs> and it's this energetic connection. Now, by the way, it's very helpful when you do this. Don't hold your breath. See, if I hold my breath, nothing happens because you need to breathe for energy to move. This is also a cue. If you practice the kata sanchan, don't ever stop your breath. Always continuous breathing. <sighs> Never. <laughs> it's just very bad for you. So you just take your heart eight point. Now, if I'm going to cheat, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this or I'm going to catch. Oh, look, I caught a little bit of that's uh, heart seven. Just reach over and hook heart seven. <laughs> Down he goes. It's very, very easy. Uh, so this is, this is a very, very simple cheat. You find his triple warmer three, touch it with your heart eight. This is a great example of how we start to include the idea of energetics in the technique. Now, this doesn't look like anything. But it's incredibly easy and effective. You probably noticed that a lot of the point work that, that I'm showing you involves the arms. That's intentional. We were trained that way. I mean, my teacher kept teaching the arm points over and over and over again. And we would go teach us a new point, and he would keep saying, pay attention to this, pay attention to that. And what I learned over the years is that that's really the way to learn it. For two reasons. First, because if you develop those skills there, then the rest is easy. Because nothing sets up, say, a knockout like the pressure points on the arms. They really do the heavy lifting. But the second thing is, as my teacher himself would always say, that's what reaches you first. Why would you go past all of these points in order to attack a point somewhere else? And so one of the rules was never pass a point to reach a point. So we treat that initial action, that person grabbing or throwing a punch, as that's where we're going to start. And remember, in most self-defense situations, isn't that what happens? Somebody reaches out and grabs you, get it ready to punch you. And that extended arm isn't going anywhere. You know what that means? It's not going anywhere. That tiny little point is really easy to hit when it's not going anyplace because they've locked on like this. Hey, I hope you'll join me again for another episode of Pressure Point Dojo here on Channel Fight. And in the meantime, I'm Chris Thomas. Thanks for watching. Now go train.